Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. Alright, let's craft together. Hey guys, today I am going to be introducing you to a new brand of DTF powder and film. This video tutorial is sponsored by Well Acer. And so they sent me their products and I'm going to do a video tutorial on a inkjet pack. This is not sublimation, this is inkjet, okay? Um, so it's Well Acer. They sent me the film in eight and a half by 11. And the good thing is they also have their film in 11 by 17. So you can do um, the eight and a half by 11 or you can do 11 by 17 with their product. And then they have their own brand of powder as well. So you can see here, well laced up. All right, so one of the things that I like about this product so far is that they come with the instructions already on there for you. It's going to walk you through everything you need to know. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I do want to point out that I really like is that in the instructions, it tells you not to use this product without proper um, gear. So you want to make sure you have on gloves and you want to make sure that you are wearing a mask. I'm not talking about the type of mask that you would wear for COVID. I am talking about this type of mask. So when I first did the DTF sublimation hack and inkjet hack, um, I did not use my gear. This is normally my mask I would use when I would be using epoxy. But this is the mask that I'm going to have on uh, when I'm handling the powder because when you're shifting that powder from side to side, that powder um, gets up into the air and you can breathe it in and it can cause you some major illnesses or sickness. So you want to make sure that you are not using this without gloves, this, this powder, you're not using it without gloves and without a mask. Okay, very important. All right, so a few cute things few key things here I'm going to point out guys is that it's going to walk you through all the steps of everything to do. Um, I'm going to go over this. I'm going to high, uh, go over a high level overview of this information with you. So you're going to find the image of choice that you want to use. You want to make sure that your image is going to leave you room so that you can handle the print side of it because if you've got print all over this that means you're not going to be able to touch it on that side to pick it up so you want to make sure that you do leave yourself some room so that you can handle the image okay but you don't want to touch the ink you're going to be printing on the non shiny side on the matte side so when i open this film it's going to have a glossy and it's going to have a non glossy what we call matte side and you want to make sure, hopefully you guys can see that. Okay. So that's the shiny side. This is the non-print side. And then this is the dull side. This is the side you're going to print on. So I'm using my HP OfficeJet Pro um, printer. So I'm going to be putting it the shiny side up when it goes in so that it comes out on the matte side. Okay. And I already have my film in my printer. Now, the shiny side is smooth and then the matte side, it has like a little ridge to it, but it's very hard to feel. It's not very noticeable. So I will highly recommend to go with the shiny. Stick to the shiny versus the dull, okay, the matte side. Shiny side, non-print, matte is the print side, okay? <clears throat> and you do not... Um, Again, want to make sure when it comes out of your printer, you want to make sure you don't touch it, okay? You don't want to touch that ink. So I'm going to put this back in because, like I said, I already have a sheet in my printer. All right, so that's it for the film. Now, your image, again, image of choice, you want to make sure you mirror the image. So I'm going to be putting my image 
um, in Microsoft PowerPoint. The only reason I'm doing PowerPoint is because in Cricut Design Space, you're going to get the registration marks. I don't have time to deal with that today. Um, if you don't cut that those registration marks off, if you do this in Cricut Design Space, then those registration marks are going to show up on your shirt or canvas or whatever you may be using to put this on. So I'm going to do mine in Microsoft PowerPoint. I don't have to worry about cutting anything because I'm going to lay it uh, after I cure it. I'm going to lay it face down on the shirt and um, then print it or heat press it. So uh, we're going to bake this. The temperature that's recommended is 230 to 320 Fahrenheit or 110 to 160 Celsius and for two to three minutes. Now I'm going to bake it in my convection oven, but I'm going to have it on bake for two to three minutes. Um, that's how I'm going to cure mine. And then um, you're going to heat press it at 302 degrees or 150 Celsius, 302 Fahrenheit or 150 Celsius for 10 to 15 seconds. Now they do say here that you can do a cold or a warm peel. I, however, is going, I'm going to do a cold peel. Um, so that's just my preference. I found that DTF works better for me with cold peels. I'm not going to do a hot peel. Okay. So I'm going to um, highly recommend, guys, that you use gloves and a protective mask. Not a COVID mask, but this type of mask. And it's only for a hot second, guys. It's only for a hot second. It's not like you have to wear this for the rest of the day. It has filters in here. Okay, you can get this off Amazon. I think I paid less than $30 for this, but for your safety, highly recommend it, okay? All right, so um, what else can I tell you? When you put the powder on, guys, you kind of want to, you know, shake it from side to side to get the full coverage over the entire image. And we'll do a second press. After we press it the first time, we'll do a second press just to make sure that our ink is in there good. Now, again, I am not doing sublimation ink. I am doing ink deck ink. In the instructions here, it tells you that this product is not for sublimation ink. You already know that I am going to try it with sublimation ink, guys, later. But I'm going to try it today with inkjet ink because I don't have DTF ink. So they do recommend either DTF ink or regular ink. So I'm going to use inkjet ink today. And we're going to see how it goes, all right? Um, in the past, I've used the DTF powder on an inkjet, and I've washed that shirt I don't know how many times, and the colors are still there and vibrant, okay? So we're going to see if we can get the same effect or outcome with Well Lacer, okay? So again, Well Lacer, DTF 8.5 by 11 film, 11 by 17 film, and also their... DTF powder. And I will have all of this linked in the description um, because you can get a discount if you use the links in my description of this video tutorial. You can get a discount on these, all three of these products. Okay. So I will have that link in the description of this video tutorial. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So without further ado, guys, we're going to jump in here and get our image printed out. I'm going to show you the whole process, how the ink, uh, how the film goes into my printer um, and with no issues. But again, if you have issues, because everybody's printer is not the same, if you have issues, just take a piece of painter's tape and put it at the very bottom of the non-print side. Do not put it on the print side. Put it on the non-print side and then feed it into your printer and your printer will recognize that there is something paper or something needing to be printed. Sometimes the film can be super thin and won't feed through your um, your printer, okay? So without further ado, let's get started on space. Now I'm going to design this out in Cricut Design Space, but I'm not going to print it from Cricut Design Space. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload my image that I want to work with which is an image that I created myself in Mid-Journey. Okay, so this is the image that I'm going to be using. And I want this to be in a um, circle or oval shape. So I'm going to go to Shapes. And I'm going to take this circle here. 
and I'm going to make that circle large enough to cover their faces, but without the circle going outside of my image. So I want all of the circle to have my ladies in it, and I don't want their faces to be don't want it to take away the faces okay. let's make sure I got it all right I think that's good oh nope All right, I think that's good. So I'm gonna highlight both of them. You can see I have both the image and the circle um, selected here in my layers. I'm gonna come down to the bottom right and slice it. Okay, and then when I move everything away, you can see that now I can delete that and the circle. And there's my image right there. And then I'm going to add some text. So my text is going to say, I am my sister's keeper. Okay. And then I'm going to make that color, I think I'm going to go with this red color. And then I'm going to curve the letters. So I'm going to click on curve for the text. And then I'm going to bring that around. Now I'm not going to bring it around so much so that um, I'm going to turn this around so that I am is at the top. So let me continue to curve. Okay, hold on one second. There we go. All right, so let me continue to curve. And I think that's good. Oops. Go in and out. And I get it just right. And then I go back out. Okay, there we go. I think that's good. I still, I want the letters to be spaced enough so that you can, you know, tell what it says. And then I'm just going to curve, get this little curved arrow to shift it around to where the I am is at the top. Okay. Like that. And let's see. Okay. Not going to spend a lot of time on that, but I'm now going to shift my circle down to where I can put it inside of I am my sister's keeper. And we're going to highlight both of them and go up to a line and we're going to say center. Okay. And that way we get it right in the middle. And then we're going to take and we're going to group those together so now that we have one cohesive image now remember i said i'm not going to be printing this from cricut design space and i'm not so i'm going to hit the print screen key on my keyboard so that i can print this screen and then i'm going to take this image into microsoft powerpoint So after I hit print screen, I'm just going to use my cursor to outline or highlight the area that I want to um, take a snapshot of. And now I'm going to jump over to Microsoft PowerPoint. And I'm going to make sure that this is on 8.5 by 11, which is the size of my film. 
and I'm going to keep it in the portrait position. And then I'm going to paste that image. Okay. So now when I print this out, I don't have to worry about the um, registration marks. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to crop this so that I can get some of the excess space out of here. So I'm just clicking on the little black bold marks to get rid of some of the space. I'm not going to worry about removing the background because that background's not going to print anyway because it's white. And then you want to put this in, uh, you want to mirror this. So to mirror in PowerPoint, you're going to click your image and click on rotate and flip horizontal. Okay, so now we have it mirrored. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to delete it. And once I delete it, over here on the right, I'm going to click on picture or texture fill and I'm going to select clipboard because my image was on the clipboard. And I want to take advantage of as much space of the eight and a half by 11. So here on the offset, I'm just going to use this up arrow to start shifting my image in so that it's not outside. And I'm going to do the same thing there. And then I'm going to bring down that just a little bit. All right, so basically what I just did is made my image my background. So now you can see that no matter where I click, it's not moving my image. And that's because my image is now my background, whereas here it is not my background. It is just an image sitting on top of my background. Okay, so now I can go in and I can, I'm ready to print this out. Okay, so we're going to go to file, print. And we're going to select print current slide. You want to make sure you only select the current slide if you have more images in that um, in that deck. So I'm going to click print current slide. And then I'm using my HP OfficeJet Pro printer. So I'm just going to check my settings here. So I'm using the OfficeJet Pro 7740, HP OfficeJet Pro 7740. Again, this is inkjet ink that I'm using, not sublimation. And letter size paper, main tray, plain paper, best quality. Okay. And I am ready to print. So before I print this out, I want to get set up so that I can catch uh, this coming out of my printer so that you guys can see that, um, you know, it, it printed with no problems. So give me one moment here. All right, we're going to print it now. All right, guys, so this is my HP OfficeJet Pro 7740. I have my, I have one sheet of inkjet or the uh, well acer DTL film in here. I have the shiny side up and then the matte side down. Okay, so I'm going to go over and press print and I want you guys to see how it comes out. So there is our image and it is wet and you see we don't have any tape or anything so it fed through just fine so now I'm gonna get my gear on and we're gonna coat it all right guys we're now going to 
we're now going to coat our image. I have my gloves on. I'm going to pull my mask up over my face here. And so you will not hear me talking while I'm coating because I have my mask on. Right, guys we're now going to go ahead and cure our image um, in my convection oven so let's go ahead and go to the convection oven um, I did see like a few little spots that it would not it looked like the ink didn't or the powder didn't stick to but we're gonna see how it turns out so I'll meet you over at the convection oven all right guys I have this just on a piece of wood and so you guys can see the spots that I'm talking about. It looks like it's sugar coated. That's what the powder should look like on the image. I'm not sure why the uh, powder wouldn't stick to some parts of it, but we're gonna go ahead and go with it because I couldn't get it any better than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in my convection oven. And I have my convection oven on bake, not on convection please do not put this in your convection oven on convection okay it's going to burn your film up so we're going to go ahead and place it in and i do have a heat thermometer in there and we're going to let that go for about three minutes and i have it right at about 275 so i'm going to let it go for about three minutes and then we'll that's to cure it and then we're going to get ready to get our shirt ready to press it. I'm going to be putting this on a white t-shirt. Um, and again, guys, we're using inkjet. This is an inkjet printer. This is not a sublimation printer. So I am doing the DTF inkjet hack, not sublimation. Okay. This product says not to be used with sublimation. So I'm trying it today with inkjet. 
but you already know eventually I'm going to test it with sublimation. Okay, so I will bring you back when our three minutes are up. All right, guys, I just took it out. I have my heat glove on, and I just want you guys to see when it cures. It looks like a um, kind of sugary coated wet surface. It should no longer look like the um, the white powdery substance that we put on here. Now, I'm almost good minded to coat this one more time, guys. That's just me, I think. So I think I'm going to coat it a second time and cure it one more time. Only because of the little splotches that I had, okay? So this is what it looked like right now. All right. All right, I coated it. I'm going to put it back in. And then we'll move to the heat press. Again, I have this on bake. Do not try this on convection on the convection, guys. It will burn that film up in a hot second, okay? And you'll have a fire hazard on your hand. So I'm using my convection oven. Um, they do say you can put this in a regular oven. I don't put any crafting products in my regular oven. This convection oven is only used for crafting projects, okay? Um, the convection oven I got at Walmart over a year and a half ago. They no longer sell this um, one, but, you know, any wide format um, convection oven should work. You just want to make sure that you do have a bake option on there. So I have mine on bake right now. When I'm doing my sublimation tumblers, I put this on convection, okay? So we're going to let that go for about three more minutes, and then we're going to heat press it, okay? Better safe than sorry. I just want to make sure that I have full coverage from those little spots that didn't look like it picked up the uh, powder from the first go round. All right, be back. All right, guys, our three minutes are up, so I'm going to go ahead and take it out. And you guys can see that it has that wet, sugary look to it. It should no longer look white like white powder all right so a couple of things i'm gonna do before i press this for my t-shirt move this over so you guys can see it all right so a couple of things i'm gonna do for the shirt is i'm going to first i'm going to lint roll this t-shirt and then we're going to press it we're going to do a pre-press for about five seconds to get out any moisture ready to lay our image down face down and we're gonna come about three fingers from the top from the neck because this is a um, rounded neck so you're gonna come down about three fingers press this um, I think it was 150 let me double check all right so we're gonna press this at 150 degrees or 150 Celsius which is what my machine has and we're gonna press it for 15 seconds so let me change this to 15 seconds
All right, so we got it at 150 for 15 seconds. I'm going to put a piece of butcher paper or parchment paper on top. and using firm medium to firm pressure we're going to press her all right here we go Now they say you can do a warm peel. I'm scared, guys. I'm normally, I do better with cold peels. So I'm going to let this cool down and then we're going to peel it. All right, guys, I let it cool. So I'm going to bring you in so you can see here. Sorry about that little bit of a shadow on there. Let me see if I turn my light on, if it'll light it up for you guys to make it better all right there we go so we're going to go ahead and peel this off out beautiful I want to hit it one more time normally with uh, DTF you do want to go in and do one final press so we're gonna press it one more time for the vibrancy of the color and we'll be done out really nice I do see like right in here that little area that I was concerned about but other than that it turned out really really nice so I am my sister's keeper you guys chime in in the comments and tell me what you think this is the well acer DTF ink jet hack this is not sublimation ink but you already know that I am going to test it out on sublimation because that's just what i do but i think it turned out really nicely guys i think it works better to do a cool peel but if you guys choose to do a warm peel and it works for you let me know i think the letters turned out really nicely all of my colors came out so not bad for an inkjet hack so this is well acer guys w-e-l-a-c-e-r i will link both the um 11 by 17 film the eight and a half by uh eight and a half by 11 film and the dtf powder for all three products i'll list them in the description of this video tutorial um again i use my uh inkjet printer and my convection oven but i had my convection oven on bake and i did coat it twice Okay, I did coat it twice, and I think it turned out nice. I'm really pleased with it. It stretches right along. I can stretch it, and it's not distorting the image. So if you guys can see that, I'm going to put it back down so you can see. I just did all kinds of crazy stretching, and it still looks nice all right all right there you have it guys if you're currently in my facebook group ken doris's cricketing creative crafters i want to thank you guys so much for following me via facebook if you would like to join my facebook group all you have to do is click the link in the description for my facebook group 
and agree to the Facebook group rules and we'll get you in. And then if you are currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, I want to thank you guys so much for the love and support that you show via YouTube. Um, if you like my method of teaching, then please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Again, this is the DTF Inkjet Hack Not Sublimation. Okay? All right, guys. That's my stir. I'm sticking to it. And please watch the complete video all the way through. Don't just start at the beginning and go to the end because you're going to miss a lot of key points on how this project, how this product works. Okay? All right, guys. You know my motto, each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have an amazing day. Bye.